Charlie says that if ever you see a box of matches lying around, tell Mummy because they can hurt you. Dad! Dad! <laughs> If you must make a journey when it's snowing, clear snow from all windows and lights. Keep windscreens clean and use screen heater and demister. Use dipped headlights or fog lights. If necessary, stop and clean windows. If you really have to drive in snow, make sure you can see and others can see you. Childhood diseases can cause blindness, deafness, brain damage, and even death. We can never be sure which child will be struck down by childhood diseases, but we know which children are less likely to be. Immunization, the safest way to protect your child. Contact your GP health visitor or clinic for more information. We played there plenty of times before. We found a place to get under the fence. I'd left the door open this time. Everything was busted, the junk. We thought it won't use no more. We were only mucking around smashing things. I hit this little box and took the sparks flew out. Get it again, get it again! He'd run up behind me. I didn't see him. It jumped out and got him. He was my best mate. Don't take a chance with electricity. Stay out of disused buildings. These are the eyes of a man whose skill depends on his sight. Normally, he makes it a rule never to take any risks. But today, he forgot. You find escalators everywhere these days and we take them for granted. But don't take your child's safety for granted. Accidents can happen. Teach them the three safeguards. Stand still and don't walk down. Stand steady and hold hands. Stand clear, away from the sides and well within the yellow lines. Don't let this happen to your child. Stand still. Stand steady, stand clear. Before you turn, please think. Pedestrians may already be crossing. When there's a likelihood of fog about, don't turn it into smog by burning rubbish or banking up fires at night. <laughs> you can help by using only smokeless fuel in <laughs> foggy weather. This is my brother George. This is Mummy. She's always telling us we must never talk to strangers, no matter how nice they are. The other day, George was waiting for Mummy when a man came up and offered him a sweet. George shook his head. Then the man said, would you like to come for a walk or ride in my car? But then George remembered what Mummy had said and hurried off to find her. Mummy was very pleased with him and she said he was a very good boy. So, children, if someone you don't know offers you something, Always refuse. Never, ever talk to strangers. 
Probably the most common single factor in deaths by drowning in the 15 to 35 age group is alcohol. We've been having such a great time. I don't reckon we had all that much to drink. Following exercise, just one pint of lager or two glasses of wine can reduce blood glucose to a dangerous level. Then he said he'd race us to that boat. We said no way. It was too cold. Too far. Come on. But he just wouldn't listen. Alcohol impairs physical ability and judgment. He said he swam from school, no problem. And then we saw he was in trouble. The low blood glucose level causes weakness and confusion. Alcohol can affect the body's temperature control, promoting rapid hypothermia. And then he was gone. He just wouldn't listen. <laughs> I used to have a terrible time with my headlights. I found they gave a lot of trouble to people I overtook, and traffic and pedestrians coming towards me. Their effect was quite devastating. So I called in my doctor, Gus, the noted brain surgeon. He said there was nothing wrong with the adjustment, and then he gave me a switch that makes my lights more manageable. He calls it a dip switch. Now, when I go out at night, I'm no trouble to anyone. My friends who have cars tell me they have dip switches too. Someone watching this program is going to be burgled tonight. Who? Where? When? There's no way of knowing until it happens. But when it does, you could be the first to know. Remember, if it opens, lock it, lock it, lock it. A burst pipe. Here's what you should do. Shut off the water immediately at the stop valve. If you don't know where it is, find out now. Then, if flooding continues, turn on the cold taps to empty the storage tank. But remember to turn off the immersion heater, or put out the boiler if you have one, before turning on the hot taps. Find the burst pipe and bind it tightly with waterproof material. If the water has come in contact with any electrical fittings, turn off at the mains. And then, when you've done all that, call the plumber. Well done, sir. An object lesson in dealing with a burst pipe. What a pity you let it happen in the first place. So that you will not think that I'm limiting your fun unreasonably, Roderick, I shall show you how there is a risk involved in using airbeds on the sea. The airbed is not a boat and cannot easily be controlled. Wind, current or tide can rapidly carry you away from the beach and out to sea. If then you should fall off, you won't have to try and swim after it. You will find it very difficult to regain. Mom! Never use an airbed where wind, waves and tides can take it and you into danger. Cold spells. An elderly person may be too frail to light a fire, make a hot meal or even move. They can then suffer from hypothermia. Even in mild weather, their body gets colder and colder. Left unattended, they can collapse and die. You may know an elderly person in your street who needs help. Why not drop in on your way to the shops tomorrow? and simply ask if everything's all right. That's how easy it is to save a life.
The last place in the world to leave a bottle is a beach. It can happen anywhere to anyone. An ordinary street, a moment's thoughtlessness. If there isn't a crossing nearby, be extra careful. Use your eyes and ears before you cross the road and all the way across. You can't argue with a car. Eyes and ears. It's your lookout. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Put it up and snap it. There's nobody coming. Come on. No, no, we'll I'll back in a minute. Come on, have a go at it. Kill you, is it? Come on. He's shaking my pat or something. Get him up. Oh, Say something. Stop breathing. Oh, no, stop him. Stop him. What's happening? Get him. Wake him. Wake up. Wake up, will you? I don't have two boyfriends and um, I didn't think I'd taken any risk at all uh, so I didn't use condoms and um, we were just perfectly ordinary. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. For more information phone the National AIDS Helpline free on 0800 567 123. He was stupid, trying to prove how tough he was. I had a go at them kids. Why do you fly your kites around here, eh? We thought it would be okay, but the wind changed. Lucky they let go of it. They'd have been electrocuted. We should have told the police. Suppose you never knew about high voltage electricity. You're crazy! He ignored the danger sign. Leave it there! He was stupid. He wouldn't come down. He didn't know electricity would go through the kite. It just jumped through thin air. Climbing pylons can kill. Don't take a chance with electricity. When there's fog about, that's a nuisance. But if it mixes with smoke and becomes smog, that's dangerous. Smog attacks clothes, buildings, people. Please help prevent it. Reduce the load on industrial furnaces and burn your rubbish some other time. Keep a stock of smokeless fuel or use gas or electric fires if you have them. Prevent smoke, prevent smog. Next time you go out in the dark, get yourself noticed. Wear something light, something reflective, or carry a newspaper. Just get yourself noticed. Wear something light. life jacket. If you leave a cigarette or pipe burning while you're out of the room, or if you don't make sure that stubs and matches are properly put out, and if they're near any upholstered furniture, you could be turning your house into a death trap. Watch this test and see just how fast fire in an upholstered armchair spreads. After only two minutes, deadly fumes and smoke begin to fill the room. Less than one minute after that, if you were in the house, you'd be affected by the smoke so fast, the chances are you'd never escape in time. So keep matches and lighted cigarettes away from upholstered furniture. Remember, smoke kills. If you suspect something is wrong, don't leave it to someone else.
It doesn't cost anything to dial 999. You don't need a card or a coin. Fire. What exchange number are you calling from? Wellport 21133. Hold the line, I'm connecting you. Don't leave it to someone else. I like the white ones. Is that the white one? <laughs> 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 <laugh
So take cover at once. Send your young children to the fallout room, then go quickly and turn off the gas and the electricity at the mains. Close down stoves. Damp down fires. Shut windows. And draw curtains. Then go to your fallout room and stay there. If the fallout warning sounds are heard, they will be like these. You should now move yourself and your family to the safest area in your fallout room. That is, you should get inside your inner refuge and stay there. After two days, the danger from fallout will get less, but don't take any risks by contact with it. The longer you stay in your refuge, the better it will be for you. Listen to your radio. Stay where you are and keep listening to your radio. Now, this is what you should do if you are out of doors when the warning sounds. Take cover at once when you hear the attack sound. If you cannot reach home in 10 minutes, take cover in the nearest building. If there is no building nearby, try to find some solid cover. If there is no solid cover, lie flat in a ditch or a hole and cover your head, face and hands as fast as you can with some of your clothes. If you hear the fallout warning, Seek the nearest and best cover as quickly as you can. But before entering the building or cover, brush or shake off any fallout dust you may have picked up and get rid of it. Change your outer clothing if you can. Stay under cover. When the all clear sounds, like this, It means that you are safe from attack or fallout for the time being and that you can go out again. But keep listening for further warnings or to your radio for further advice. and said, would I like to see some puppies? And I said, yes. And I was going to go, but Charlie stopped me. <coughs> Charlie's reminded me, my mum says I shouldn't go off with people I don't know. Then the man went away. We went and told mummy, and she said we've been very good. I got an apple and Charlie got something he likes. <coughs> he says never go anywhere with men or ladies you don't know. Won't be a minute. Remember how elastic a minute could be when we were small? This minute, the one you see being eaten up is the last minute of this little girl's life. Stay on the pavement. Good advice. It's not enough. No young child should be out alone near traffic, however little there may be. One car is enough. There could be a hundred good reasons why you can't always be with them. But make sure your child is away from traffic. When this child crosses the road because she has seen her best friend, what she will not see or hear is the car 
that will knock her down. The sudden excitement blots out everything else. All she can hear and see is what is inside her own head. It is that simple. It is that deadly. Only gays and IV drug users were being killed by AIDS. But now we know every one of us could be devastated by it. The fact is, over 50,000 men, women and children now carry the AIDS virus. That in three years, nearly 2,000 of us will be dead. That if not stopped, it could kill more Australians than World War II. But AIDS can be stopped and you can help stop it. If you have sex, have just one safe partner or always use condoms. Always. Oh, Joe, I have enjoyed our country walk. Yes, we've come a long way, Petunia. Look, you can see our tracks right across that yellow cornfield. Oh, yes. It's ever so nice in this field, but I'm glad those cows have gone. Ah, they're taking themselves off for a walk down the road. Look, through that gate I opened. The one mark private. Oh, yes. <coughs> our little Bingo's having a lovely time playing with those sheep. The exercise will do him good. <coughs> hey, I've hit that bottle, but you <laughs> it smashed up a tree. Oh, very clever. It, you know, the, there's a farmer down there with a purple face. I expect it's all that sun in the open air life, Joe. Now he's doing one of those country dances. Well, I don't think he looks very friendly. Oh, maybe you're right. Though it can't be anything we've done. No. But I won't stay where I'm not wanted. Come on, Joe. When folk come out to the country, why, oh, why won't they follow the country code? If your home is heated by solid fuel, gas, oil or paraffin, or even a nice little wood-burning stove. There are two important things to remember. Air must get in, fumes must get out. So check that air vents are not blocked, because if they are, choking fumes can't escape, and fresh air can't get in. And on no account, rest anything against outside grills. Remember, air in, fumes out. Flues and chimneys can be a danger too. If not kept clear, fumes will come back into the room and in some cases, these fumes can kill. So have your chimney or flue cleaned at least once a year. Remember, air in, fumes out. Is this all your baggage, madam? The outcome of a sentimental impulse could mean a sentence of death for the animal you love and couldn't leave behind, and for you or someone like you, death in a manner that is beyond description. Whichever way you look at it, rabies means death. switch on your headlights. Slow down and keep a safe distance. Headlights or fog lights must always be used in fog. Be careful, Joe. Joe! Joe, don't go so fast! Go! 
Come on, Robin. Okay, Dad. It was lovely oh. when they set off. Bill said it was a good day for fishing. It's very calm today, doesn't it? It's great. It was Bobby's first trip. His dad said he could go with him so long as he left that transistor of his behind. I suppose if they had taken the radio with them, they'd have heard the weather. And he never really bothered with the forecast anyway. He said he was only out to catch a few fish, not so around the world. have believed the weather could change so quick. If only they'd had the radio, they might have heard the warning. This man was safe. Until now. He hasn't bothered to get the plug changed. From now on, he's in deadly danger. If the earth wire slips out, he won't notice. But as soon as it touches the live wire, And anyone who touches him also gets a shock. Fix things properly. So what's she always on about this kid about it? Oh, I don't know. I said to her last week, I said, you know, you won't too much about Stephen. See him in school next year, that'll soon sort him out. Yeah, well, that's her look at, isn't it? Should have been stricter with him at the right time. Yeah, well, you're too strict, you are. I'm not strict, I'm fair. No doubt Kevin in the arm, is it? Yeah, you can't hold kids back, though. I'm not saying hold him back. I'm saying there's such a thing as discipline. Fair discipline. Well, I still say he got to a line. Anyway, where is Kevin this afternoon? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think he said he was going out to see Stephen. Yeah, that's another thing I don't like either. Them playing together. There's enough kids round here judging by the route the weekend. Jim! If your child was killed or badly injured in a firework accident like this, you'd probably blame the parents of the other children. But your children are your responsibility. Make sure yours aren't meddling with fireworks this bonfire night. Can you describe it, Colour? Oh. I mean, a bike's a bike. How do you describe a bike? Big, awkward-looking handlebars. I don't really know what they're called. Got a lot of parts on it. If you have a bicycle but can't really describe it. No, I'm sorry. I didn't lock my bike. I didn't think it necessary. I just left it in my back way. And, and you leave your bike without a lock? Uh, I'd rather not see you. It's in the saddlebag. It's personal. And leave valuables in your saddlebag. I didn't know there was one on it. What's the frame number? And you can't even remember the frame number. Didn't you think to lock it, sir? <laughs> no. No one locked pinch it round here. Well, somebody pinched it, didn't they? You may well lose your bike for good. This is the second bike in two years. You think you'd be able to find it, mister? You not believe this, Sarge. Someone's just nipped me bike. You know, sometimes I do get awfully fed up with you lot. I'm always happy to help you when you want to swim. I give you lots of fish to catch. I even leave you things to play with when I'm not around. But then some of you start taking me for granted. You know I have my bad moods, and yet you ignore all the warning signs. Then you shout for help when my undercurrent carries you away. Or when a wave sweeps you off. Or when you get cut off as I come rushing back with the tide. I can't help the way I made you know what I'm like. The sea can take you by surprise. So never ignore any warning signs. <sighs> we recently road tested the current model of uh, pedestrian. <coughs> Morning cold start, poor. Fuel consumption, heavy. The model needed topping up throughout the day. Road holding. Fair, but in bad conditions, brakes were unreliable. And although the same model has been in production for some time now, spare parts are hard to obtain. However, the makers assure us that it is rust-proof and all essential parts should last a lifetime. But where our model really did badly was resistance to damage. All tests show that in collision with other vehicles, it always came off worst with 27,000 each year seriously damaged or total write-offs. So we strongly recommend that when you take this model on the roads, you proceed at all times with great caution. There is now a danger that has become a threat to us all. It is a deadly disease and there is no known cure. The virus can be passed during sexual intercourse with an infected person. Anyone can get it. 
So far, it's been confined to small groups, but it's spreading. So protect yourself, and read this leaflet when it arrives. If you ignore AIDS, it could be the death of you. So don't die of ignorance. If you don't talk to your child about solvent abuse, someone else will. A leaflet will be delivered to you soon. It contains information you need to help your child say no. Hello, Jane. Never leave a fat pan unattended. That's the key. This is my dad. That's my sister. This is my mum, and my men. She always waits there. She worries when we're not all home. Mum and Dad worry when I am. Mind you don't burn yourself. Dry yourself properly. You'll ruin your eyes. And every Saturday morning when me and Mum go shopping, my nan always tells me to look out for the traffic. Me! It's Mum she should be telling. When she wants to get to the shop opposite, she just takes off. She doesn't bother with the crossing. We've been told at school not to go between parked cars, but to use the crossings. And my mum says that's quite right when you're young. At home there's all that sit up and eat up, otherwise you won't grow up to be big and strong and healthy. And outside, where there are cars and lorries and buses wagging past, my mum should be wearing l paints crossing the road. Good job she doesn't drive. My dad does, and he's very careful, but he doesn't always practice what he preaches. Me and him had been up in the park Sunday morning. Then he remembered we hadn't bought the car. But I started walking to the subway, and he tells me to make us late for our dinner. It's very funny how grown-ups can always be right, even when they're wrong. Now, if anybody had tried that when he'd been driving, he'd have done his nut. The best, though, was when I was with Mum. Me and her were on our way home after getting me more shoes. Anyway, we have to cross the road. And she didn't even see the car coming. She was about to tell the driver what she thought about him, and he was out the car to do the same. And you know who he was? My dad! In our new car. We could have all finished up as mincemeat. And you tell me how they would have explained that to my name. Please keep matches away from children. Only the English Channel stands between Britain and rabies. And rabies can't reach Britain without human help. If you're bitten by a rabid animal, the treatment which tries to check the disease is long and painful. And it doesn't always work. If the treatment fails and rabies does develop, it kills. So don't let selfish sentimentality tempt you to smuggle any animal back into Britain. Keep rabies out, because rabies kills people. When he left school, Dennis Trout, like most of all, is a clown about. But on factory floor, the tricks of Dennis to his mates. 
became a menace. For instance, a compressed air hose, a useful tool, but deadly handled by a fool. But metal filings in the eye can very often blind a guy. To throw a rag may seem fun, yet cause a mate to crush a thumb. So on factory floor, don't be a burk. Keep your tricks for after work. If you imagine this is your car, then this is a motorcycle. Now, when you drive up to a main road, it's easy to see other cars. But because a motorcycle is a third of the width of a car, he's very hard to see, but he's dead easy to hurt. <laughs> Nasty. And that's why, at junctions, I'm asking you to give a second thought for bikes. Stop, think once for cars, hold it, then think again for bikes. If you want to avoid this, think once, think twice, think bike. Go on, get it. We're not supposed to go in there. Oh, go on, there's a gap down there. A gang of kids broke in yesterday. I saw them. Pass me that bit of wood. shock killed a boy today when he broke into a substation. The electricity board warns children to keep away from substations. Never try to get toys back yourself, otherwise you may not live to play with them again. Every morning the same. This bus will get her there on time, the next one five minutes late. And time seems to be so important. Hundreds of people are killed or injured each year running for buses, just to save a few minutes. It's not worth the risk. When you've come home from work and decided you're very tired, ready for bed, think safe. Tidy up at night. Settle the coals. Put the guard in front of the fire. Empty the ashtrays. If clothes are airing near a boiler, remove them. And any oil heaters should be turned off. Take out electric plugs, especially heaters and electric irons. Not forgetting the TV set. All these are sources of danger, especially at night. Don't gamble with lives and property. You're bound to lose in the end. So when you're ready for bed, think. Charlie and I were out the back when Vera and Dave came by and said, come along for a picnic. And I was going, but Charlie said, <coughs> he says I'd better tell Mum where I'm going. So we told him to wait while we went and asked. But Mum was talking to the milkman. And she talked such a long time that when I had asked her and she'd said yes, the others had gone. Mum asked us why we hadn't gone and when I told her, she said we'd been good for not going and would we like a day out with her instead? <laughs> Charlie says always tell your mummy before you go off somewhere so she knows who you are with. When she got back, there was a smell of smoke. Where's mummy gone? To the fish and chip shop, of course. When she opened the door, there were flames. Here, Mum said you wasn't to touch that. It's all right. Whatever you've taught them, you can't be sure they'll play safe. I want to do it. Give it here. Don't leave children alone in the house, even for a short time. Mum! 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 
Are you all right, Tansy? Even when you take care and switch an appliance off, its flex can still be a danger. Kettles and irons stay hot. <laughs> Keep flexes out of children's reach. You'd think you'd wake in a house fire, wouldn't you? But just two to three breaths of toxic smoke and you're unconscious. Your lungs fill up. Just like drowning. Don't drown in toxic smoke. Test your smoke alarm weekly. It's Sunday. Go back to bed. You can help me clean the car later. Children under five must never be let out of doors on their own. Stay with them. Make sure they can't run into the road. You do not go into the road. How many more times? How many more times? For this small boy, no more. Now, Roman, tell your dad dinner's ready. Children under five must never be let out of doors on their own. Seen something interesting, Joe? Uh, no, not really, Petunia. Well, you must have spotted something. Uh, well, it's uh, what you might call a, a rare sea bird. Oh, fancy. How nice. I uh, think I might go for a little swim, Petunia. <gasps> not here, Joe. A red notice means it's permanently unsafe and you must never, never bathe from here. Oh. That water looks very inviting, Petunia. You can't bathe from here either. Not now. Can't you see the red flag? It means it's just not safe. But I can swim like a fish. That's no excuse, Joe. As long as the red flag's flying, you must go in the water. Oh. Now you're in luck. Red and yellow flags. That means the area between them is patrolled by lifeguards. Now in you go, Joe. Funny, but I've I've changed my mind, Petunia. Oh, men! Honestly, love, as if I haven't got enough to do. All these blooming doors to cope with. Like getting to a trip point, Charlie, around these corridors. You want to wedge them open, Ada? Hang about. I've got one here, haven't I? There you go. Oh, Terry, you are a good boy. That's better. I remember you in my will. Shut up. Old Ada's cracking on about them fire doors again. They ought to leave them open all the time. It's stupid, isn't it? You coming in? If there should be a fire where you work, the quickest way to make it spread is to wedge open a fire door. Fire doors prevent fire spreading and they're a barrier against suffocating fumes and smoke, giving you enough time to escape to safety. Never wedge open a fire door, never lock them shut. Fire doors can save lives. Yours, maybe. Over a thousand people a year still get injured by fireworks. For parents to supervise children's activities during More than two-thirds of them are children. Do you know where your child is in the weeks up to November the 5th? Out collecting? Getting fireworks from older children? Parents, where's your child tonight? Where's that boy? Building sites look exciting, like a real adventure playground. So easy to get into, so many things to do. Hours of fun when there's no one about. Things to climb on. Things to get into. Things to play with and things to kill you. Children get killed and injured every year on building sites, just playing around. Make sure it doesn't happen to you. Keep out. It was getting dark before they found him, sir. 
The body was caught under the ice, you see. Well, his mother said he'd gone off to the pond with the others and she thought they'd be safe on their own. It wasn't that far away. It seems he was sliding out further than the others and the ice wasn't as thick there. What's that, sir? Oh, no. Well, she said she never dreamed it was that dangerous. Frozen ponds can be dangerous. Always make sure you supervise children. Test the ice before they play on it and make certain they stay close to the shore. This is every mother's nightmare. You've left your baby for just a moment. While you're gone, the baby starts to rock. The pram tips. Don't let the nightmare come true. If you must leave your baby, always strap him in with care. Never hang bags from the handles. Use a properly fitted shopping basket on your pram or pushchair. Take care. Don't let the nightmare come true. Children, always so trusting, happy, unafraid. What a pity to have to remind them about the darker side of life, but it must be done. Remind them of danger, danger from going with strangers, especially strangers in cars, enticing children to get in with plausible stories. Would you like to get in my car? Mummy sent me to fetch you. You naughty, naughty, naughty man, I don't believe you. Take that, and that, and that. Now then, now then. Always remind your children about the danger from strangers, but do it in such a way as you don't frighten them. And make sure you always know where they are, any time of the day. That's the way to do it. One day when my dad went fishing, he took Charlie and me along. While he was fishing, we started having fun with the puddles. Dad shouted, come back here. But just then, Charlie tried to do an extra big jump and he went over the edge and into the water. Charlie nearly drowned. It was very lucky for him, he caught on the line. Charlie says next time we go fishing, we should stay very close to Dad where he can look after us. And he hopes that when you go near the water, you'll stay close to a grown-up too. Good morning. You may think your child is safe. Eggs. But please, if he's under five, make sure he can't get out into the street. These are the danger signs. A door that isn't shut properly. An everyday distraction. A gate left open. A four-year-old who finds the street a great adventure. Remember the danger signs around your home and make sure the under five stay inside. So where's your David then? I've told you. He stopped for a quick drink at his sister's. He'll be here soon. Well, he's missed it then. David, yes, that's my boyfriend. <laughs> I am the spirit of dark and lonely water, ready to trap the unwary, the show-off, the fool. And this is the kind of place you'd expect to find me. But no one expects to find me here. It seems too ordinary. But that pool is deep. The boy is showing off. The bank is slippery. The show-offs are easy. But the unwary ones are easier still. This branch is weak, rotten. It'll never take his way. Only a fool would ignore this. But there's one born every minute. Under the water there are traps. Old cars, bedsteads, weeds, hidden depths. It's the perfect place for an accident. 
someone in the wall. Ah, quick, get that big stick to get him out. Sensible children. I have no power over them. Oh, mate, that's a stupid place to swim. Hey, go over and get that thing to wrap him in. You do not feel cold, mate. How long was you in there? Ew, all the things. I'll be back. Back, 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 back. <laughs> Fed up. Being a gas means you want to keep moving. But in these cylinders, there's no room to expand at all. And anyway, in a mobile heater, the most you can hope for is a short trip up the tube to the heady excitement of being a controlled flame. We do get out sometimes, you know. And in fact, yeah, there's a leak. Now's my chance. <sighs> Time to build up a nice surprise. Here we go. Take care with the gas in your heater. Good morning, madam. Two pints and a fresh orange juice this morning, I believe. You're not my milkman. Well, no, hardly, madam. Actually, I've come to read the meter. But you're not my usual meter reader. No, he asked me to do him a favor and take a quick look at the meter while I'm here. Well, why are you here? I cannot tell a lie. I'm from the council. Drain. Oh, dear. But the man from the council was here last week. Know him well. Told me all about it. Nasty business. <laughs> Well, <laughs> to tell the truth, I'm trying to sell you something. And it would be easier if we could discuss it inside. I don't really believe you, no, but <laughs> well, Actually, of course, I am trying to con my way in and steal the family silver. <laughs> Not everyone is what they seem. Before you let strangers in, ask for proof of who they are. Or make an appointment. What is he doing with those candlesticks? There's a child whose life has changed in the last year. He's given up football because he can't see the ball too well. He can't cross the road alone because he can't be sure it's clear. And he won't see much of the fireworks this year because last year a firework was thrown and blew up in his face. Somewhere there are other children whose lives are going to be changed. Will one of them be your child? If you leave your pan of cooking fat or oil with the heat on, it's going to get very hot. When it gets hot enough, it'll catch fire. When you notice it, first turn off the heat. Second, run a tea towel under the tap, then wring it out until it's just damp. Third, place it over the area of the fire. And fourth, leave the pan alone until it's completely cooled down. Of course, if you don't leave your chip pan unattended, you won't have to do any of this. Fire. If you don't let it start, you won't have to stop it. To you, it's just a worn-out fridge. But to a child, it's a caravan, a ship, a castle, even a bed. And a death trap, airtight and impossible to open from the inside. Don't let an old fridge be a new danger to children. Take off the door or smash the lock. Or better still, ask your local council to take it away or tell you how to dispose of it before it kills a child. Oh, it's ever so nice and peaceful up here, Joe. Nice view, too. Ah, very nice, Petunia. And look at that nice little boat. He's having a lot of fun out there in his little dingy. That's what they call him, you know, sailing dingy. Aren't People at our hotel, Joe. <laughs> Hello. Now he's splicing his main brakes. <laughs> Though I don't think the man on table number six is very nice. Hey, do you think he's in trouble, Petunia? Oh, no, Joe. He's just enjoying himself on holiday. Oh, he's decided to have a swim. Now he's going to climb back again. I expect that water's a bit cold, don't you? Oh, oh, he's changed his mind. Now he's waving to us. Go away! I can't say I recognise him, though. But he must know us. Maybe it's the gent on table number six. No, it's not him. He's mu Oh, now he's shouting. A lovely day, isn't it? Help! Help! Dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard! I can't hear a word he's saying, you know. Help. Dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. Well, I never. If you see a boat you think may be in distress, 
dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. Childhood diseases can be caught by any child at any time. They can lead to blindness, deafness, brain damage, and even death. Measles, mumps, rubella, diphtheria, poopy Immunization, the safest way to protect your child. Now, this is a pedestrian light control crossing. The Pelican Crossing. To cross the road, you press the button and wait. Wait until the red man changes to the green man. See? Yes. Now, if all is clear, we can cross. There we are. <laughs> oh, dear, I've left my brolly behind. I'll get it, Grandad. No, stop. The green man is flashing. Ooh. Yes, that means the lights are about to change. Ooh. So you mustn't start to cross. Oh, I see. That's a good girl. Now, remember, you have to wait until the red man changes to green. Then, if all's clear, cross. Oh. Don't forget, when the green man flashes, it's too late to step out. There. Oh, it started to rain. Wish I'd brought my brother. Eh? ready for you now. Well, Michael, the results of your blood test have come through, and we have found antibodies that indicate that you are HIV positive, 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 positive. The AIDS virus can live on dirty needles and equipment, so don't share because just one fix with an infected needle will really get you out of it. This is Mummy. If ever I go out of the house and forget to tell her, she gets very upset. Yesterday, Colin and Susan came past and said they were going for a picnic with Auntie Jane. And I said, could I come too? And they said yes. But I couldn't tell Mummy because she was on the telephone. And when I came out, Colin and Susan were gone. When Mummy heard that I hadn't gone off without telling her, she was very pleased and she promised me a picnic with her and Daddy as a reward. So, boys and girls, always tell Mummy where you are, even if you're going with someone you know. Always, always tell her where you are. What's the matter? If you suspect that fire has broken out in your home and you open the door to investigate further, your whole family could be dead within minutes. Laura, get the kids. So don't open the door on fire. Come on, wake up. Get your dressing gown on. Because fire spreads faster than you can move, and Wait, smoke can that. kill within seconds. Keep calm, but act fast. First, get everyone safely out of the house. Then dial 999 and ask for the fire brigade. This is the time of year for frost. Don't be caught out. Frozen pipes can be avoided. So make sure your house is really frostproof. The ways of the farmer have changed greatly over the years, and so have his pieces of machinery. But he still works from dawn to dusk and requires a good night's sleep.
light at night travels far. It also travels quite a way during the day. Country roads have special dangers. Care and patience are needed when passing farm animals or bulky, slow-moving farm machinery. Careless parking may block the entrance to fields or farm buildings. So go carefully on country roads and park with consideration. Remember too that loudly played radios are annoying both to the farmer and other visitors to the countryside. Most dogs enjoy a day in the country. But their exuberance is not always appreciated by the locals. Calves and lambs are often born dead because their mothers have been frightened by dogs. Now this farm dog is trained not to chase the animals. So train your dog to obey you. If he doesn't obey, put him on a lead when near farm animals. People who let their dogs go berserk in the country are often not much better themselves. They have no respect for the farmer's property, his gates and walls. Public footpaths across farmland are there for your use, but to stray from them causes unnecessary damage to crops, including grass. The hedges and walls in the country are not just for decoration. They are functional ones to keep sheep and cattle safe and away from all the crops the farmer grows. The farmer often has to leave his machinery unattended. It is costly equipment, so never interfere with it. Unlocked barns and buildings house seeds and fertilizers and other valuable equipment. So please, leave the farmer's things alone. Respect his way of life, his animals, crops and machinery. Protect also the wildlife of the countryside and don't follow the example of the fox. Things that start off in an innocent way can cause a lot of harm. If we do this, the trees will suffer. Trees are valuable as well as beautiful. Their health and beauty will also suffer if blossom is torn off or branches are broken. If wild plants are uprooted, they will soon become rare. Leave them for others to see. Let birds and wild animals lead their lives undisturbed. If it is necessary for you to light a fire to cook, make sure you keep it under proper control. Fire is lethal when left to its own devices. It will destroy all in its path. Moors, woodlands, young plantations and wildlife, farmlands and livestock, all can be lost in a short time through carelessness. On a fine summer's day, besides the smoke from your fire, other strange things take to the air. Litter, a good job tins can't fly but they do, and so do some bottles. Rivers and streams are good landmarks from up here, and you'd be surprised at some of the things we see. Sheep and cattle often get hurt by broken glass or by tins, and that harvester could be put out of action by a broken bottle. Remember too that plastic bags are dangerous to animals. They may suffocate if help is not at hand. The countryside is not provided with litter bins, so follow the country code and take your litter home. Mary lived here. Mary was born during the war. Went to a good school and on to university. She liked swimming, dancing, she was going to be married in the summer. Last night, Mary went to bed and left the fire unguarded, and she died in the blaze that followed. 
Tonight, before you go to bed, fire guard your home. Settle and guard open fires. Make sure cigarettes are out and empty ashtrays into a safe container. Switch off electrical appliances and unplug at the sockets. Close all doors. Don't make the same mistake as Mary. Fire is a nightmare. This is me, thinking as usual about Dave. Dave is super. Dave can do anything. Oh, he's great. He really is. When pow, up pops my fairy godmother with a I'll give you three wishes routine. Wish number one is easy. Next, I wish we were both at the seaside. Come on, Dave, let's swim, I say. It's just not my scene, man, says Dave. What he really meant was he couldn't swim. <whistles> I've still got one wish left, remember? Meet Mike. He right. swims like a fish. Yes, I wish... I wish I didn't keep losing me birds. Then learn to swim, young man. Learn to swim. If you can't swim, ask about lessons at your local swimming baths. Do learn to swim. It could save your life. Eh, uh, nice view from up here, Petunia. Yes, very nice, Joe. Worn tyres kill. Worn tyres kill? Are our tyres worn, Joe? Yeah, oh, I wouldn't think so, Petunia. Well, I expect you've looked. You have looked, haven't you, Joe? Joe, have you looked at our tyres? Uh, yes. Uh, Recently, Joe? <laughs> nice view from up here, Petunia. Joe, are our tyres warm? Uh, not warm, Petunia. They're a bit smooth. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> nice view from up here, Petunia. Yes, very nice, Joe. Not saying hello to me, then? She's not quite herself today. Well. Show Mrs. Green what you did, love. Oh, how did she do that? Well, it was yesterday evening. We had just a few fireworks for the kids. I thought we were ever so careful, but there's always something you forget to tell them. How did it happen, then? It's a sparkler. You wouldn't believe it, would you? I mean, really. It wasn't as though the children were on their own. I was there. I did the lighting. And I took good care they were holding the sparklers properly at arm's length. Not dancing around, waving them and poking each other's eyes out. So what did happen then? Well, I ask you. When the sparkler's finished, back she goes and tries to pick it up. <whistles> it may look cool, but it's still red hot, isn't it? What a silly girl, then. Make sure your child doesn't start November the 6th like this. Or worse. My head hits the pillow, I'm straight out. Take a chance at a level crossing, and it's only a matter of time. I was expecting run. Level crossings, please, don't run the risk. This is an emergency broadcast from the BBC. Information regarding a possible nuclear strike against this country has been received. The current threat level is critical, meaning an attack is imminent. Civilians are advised to remain in their homes, and emergency fallout shelters are now opening across the country. All airports and motorways have been closed for military usage.